ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on September 9th, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. This meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the Select Board Agendas and Minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more participants and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time fail, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email for a backup audio connection to the meeting. There will be two opportunities for public participation this evening, our open forum, and we also have a hearing on a uh, removal of a shade tree, that is item 15. If you are attending by Zoom and want to participate, please raise your hand when I announce that public comment is open. We have 18 items this evening. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. So with that, I will move to item number two, which is a um, proclamation for Hunger Action Day. Happy to have uh, Andy Doan from our, the Executive Director of Arlington Eats here this evening. I was gonna read the proclamation and then if you wanted to add anything afterwards. Um, so this is a proposed proclamation for our vote. Before I do that, I do wanna note Mr. Helmuth is not joining us tonight. Uh, so, whereas hunger and poverty are issues of grave concern in the United States, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and Arlington, and whereas due to the persistently high cost of groceries and the end of many COVID-19 policies, overall food insecurity rates persist with one in three individuals in Massachusetts reporting running out of food or not having enough money to buy food each month. Whereas inequities in access to food remain prevalent with rates of food insecurity in the Commonwealth significantly higher than average in black, Hispanic, American Indian, Alaska Native, and LGBTQ plus households. And whereas the town of Arlington recognizes that Arlington Eats, Arlington Council on Aging, Food Link, and Arlington Public Schools work in partnership to address food insecurity in the community. And whereas Arlington Eats is serving more neighbors than ever, the market served 452 households each week in the past year, a number that has more than doubled since 2020. Whereas the Arlington Council on Aging acts as the transportation partner for Arlington Eats and has provided 807 rides to the market in the past year at no cost to the riders. And whereas in 2023, Foodlink collected 1.4 million pounds of food, the equivalent of 1.2 million meals, and distributed, to, distributed it to 108 social services agencies throughout 46 communities in Greater Boston. And whereas the Greater Boston Food Bank distributes over 104 million pounds of food a year in Eastern Massachusetts and is a critical resource for its community partners including Arlington Eats. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Arlington encourages any resident in need of food to call Arlington Eats at 339-707-6761 or visit arlingtoneats.org and resolved that the town of Arlington encourages residents to support efforts to alleviate food insecurity by volunteering and donating money or food when they are available and resolved that September 10, 2024 
shall be proclaimed as Hunger Action Day in Arlington and that all residents are encouraged to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. And that subject to a vote will be signed by the Select Board, Ms. Stone. Uh, so thank you for all your work at, at Arlington Eats and, and uh, work in the community. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Select Board members. Um, it's great to be here tonight, and we appreciate this support of having a Hunger Action Day proclamation here in Arlington. It's easy to look at our community and think we're doing okay, houses are you know, multi-million dollars, but there's a lot of our neighbors that are experiencing food insecurity. And as the chairman read, um, the numbers have not gone down since COVID. We really thought that COVID be, would be, you know, the, the peak, but uh, more and more residents, I think with rising um, cost of living and food costs are struggling with food insecurity. Um, but Arlington is a place where people are engaged, they're generous with their time and their money, and so this is a great opportunity for Arlington residents to get involved. I'm excited to mention that this year we're partnering with Foodlink as well as the Arlington Libraries to host a number of activities, most of which are this week. Uh, you, for our youngest residents, there's several story times happening at both Fox and Robbins Libraries. Um, and we also are hosting a screening of A Place at the Table, uh, which is a documentary that highlights food insecurity in the United States. Uh, we'll be having that on Thursday evening at uh, 6.30 p.m. at the Robbins Library Community Room. Uh, the public is invited to join us, and after the screening, we'll have a panel discussion with representatives from Arlington Eats and Food, food Link. Uh, as well as our own Park Wildey, who is an Arlington resident and is a food economist at Tufts University. Um, if you're not able to participate in those events, there's lots of resources on both arlingtoneats.org as well as foodlinkma.org. Um, there's even things that you can do with your family, like do a food waste audit of your own household to see how you are using your food and if there's ways that you can reduce your food waste and then perhaps give, it, give food to others or give um, your time or your money as well. So thank you for this opportunity and we appreciate your support. Thank you. I'll turn to board members. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, first, I'd like to uh, move approval and say thank you so much. Um, I think part of the reason um, that the numbers haven't gone down, um, besides cost of living and, and other factors, um, I think it's really a testament to the great job that you all are doing. Um, I know the events that I've gone to. I know growing up when I would get the block of cheese from the government that they couldn't even cut. They had to remind you they were poor and the block, the block of butter and the powdered milk um, and, and the way it was distributed was not very comfortable if, you, if, if you're in those circumstances. And I think part of the reason the numbers have, are high and have stayed high is because of people, families um, being able to come out and, and feel comfortable with and, and not just the accessibility issue, but the mental accessibility issue. And I think you've done a great job with that. Um, you know, getting that across and, you know, having community needs, eats events, and then having whatever came in that day, fresh produce or uh, perishable, non-perishable. And that's when families see, oh, this isn't just, you know, do-gooders feeling good giving us the blocks of cheese, it, it's something that can help me maintain my fa our family. So um, I'm thrilled that you're doing this, but I'm also thr thrilled and impressed and thankful the way that you're doing it. And um, perhaps you could coordinate with the chair between now and next April uh, for one of the community eats nights, um, the, whatever as many members of the board can come in and be the volunteers and do the serving of the dinner. I've done that in years past. Um, and, and I think it's a great event. It, you know, if you think it's doable, there's no politicking, there's no I'm up for re-election. The best thing is most of them don't even know who any of us are, which is fantastic. So. Well, I have to give credit. So that's neat. It's yeah. another organization of volunteers who are coordinating that. But okay. I'm sure they would be glad to have yeah. you all okay. come and volunteer. Yeah. Okay, thanks. I'll coordinate with them. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurt? Second. And I think it was about a year, is it a year ago, March, that the new facility opened over in two, uh, two, two years. years. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, you know, I know that building was in planning for a long time, and it was a long time coming, and there was a lot of moves that had to be made to get there. But it really is an amazing facility, and it's a testament to the organization from top bottom to bottom, from the volunteers to the 
executive director that really does so much in Arlington and is very well trusted by Arlington residents who participate and also who give to the organization because you don't give to an organization if you don't think that the money is going to be spent well. And uh, it really is an amazing resource for residents in Arlington. It's come a long way and since we met down in the community center a few years, probably about 10 years ago. But it really is, it's been so many great partnerships along the way have created what it is now. So thank you for the work that you do and continue to do. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, I will spare you the sermon that I usually give about poverty, meaning how we won't solve the problem mm -hmm. until we solve poverty, poverty you know, and just express my appreciation for all that you do. And uh, in the resolution, you provide a nice link to some good information, you know, in that um, 2024 opportunities for food equity and access in Massachusetts report. Lots of good information there. It's a well done report, you know, good graphics, I mean, and, and good footnotes. So thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Um, yeah, and I echo that, that, that the comments of, the, of our board members, and we will have the link to phone numbers and websites. And, and uh, as, as said in the proclamation, we encourage any resident in need of food to contact Arlington Eats, but we also encourage residents to get involved who, who are able to help out. Um, so on a motion for approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. And thank you. So we're getting for the public tomorrow is Hunger Action Day in Arlington, September 10th. Next is item three, bikeway block party. Christopher Tonkin, chair of the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee. Hello, everyone. Good, Good evening. evening. Uh, chairman and uh, select board. Okay, sure. Certainly. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. This is Jim Cadenhead, uh, who's I, I wanted who's, a module uh, for to become a parent fairly soon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Our Instagram, our Facebook has a couple of uh, short videos of the modulars and cool. parkers. Great. Okay. So um, this is we've applied for um, a license to have an event. Uh, Surrounded Jefferson Cutter House um, this Sunday. Um, it's going to be a uh, synth uh, showcase of uh, music of synthesizers from a, a group of um, amateurs, uh, musicians, and computer people. Uh, and they're going. To, it's part of a uh, a much broader event, which is the Bikeway Block Party, which is mainly centered in Lexington, and we're the Arlington Outpost, and there's a, also a, a, a current something happening at the Bedford Depot. So it's a, a bikeway long event. It's hoped that perhaps this is a, the kickoff, and it might turn into an annual event, which would help bring people and um, users to the bikeway out, out late summer. Um, and it also might be a good ent entrance to help um, because it's a little bit before at the 250th anniversary event, so um, that's what's going to be happening in Lexington. Jim can tell you more about it than that's in bolts because he's been the uh, the guy organizing it. So Jim, if you want to. Sure, thank you. Uh, yeah, the Bikeway Block Party, basically we are a kickoff event for the Lex 250, the 250th celebration there. Uh, we are, um, we're turning seven parks along the bikeway into venues. Uh, everything that we're offering is free. We have all kinds of performances. It's a community-based festival. It's a brand new style. It's focused on music, dance, wellness, uh, and, and kids' activities. So, and uh, we're not asking anything from anybody. We're setting it up so that it's ru being run by volunteers and, uh, and we don't have, you don't have to go through tables of information in order to participate. So, uh, super rad little festival, and we are just hoping to grow, uh, grow the love in the community. You know. Yeah, so this is just our, this is just an application for the Arlington portion of this. Certainly. So uh, you know, and if you have any questions, we'd, we'd uh, be happy to. We also have uh, with us um, someone from the uh, Darlin Museum, so they, you know they uh, they're on board of this. So we talked to them. I've uh, notified the police. There's going to be. Um, an event there, but we don't. We're not requesting a detail because we're not. It, we're not selling or 
anything at all is just a pass by, and I think people will be pass may stop for a while and just may move on. But, okay. um, good. And hopefully go to other stores in Lexington, in uh, sorry, Arlington Centre. Certainly, good, good. Well, thank, thank, thank you for the presentation. The event sounds like a great event. I see Mr. Holland here, and I see him nodding his head as you're uh, making the presentation. And he's on board, so uh, I will turn to board members and start with Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, I would like to um, make a motion to support this because I think it's just the coolest thing, you know. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, I used to do electronic music. A long time ago, actually, before before Macs came out, and, and I started using Opcode as soon as it came out. Even though I wasn't a Mac guy, I was a PC guy. You know, and and this is this is really just the coolest. I mean, um, electronic music and dance. I mean, uh, I mean, what better combination? I see you have Mouse Kid here. I'm just wondering if he has any relationship to Dead Mouse. No, I don't think so. But right. uh, does a joke, but you got it. Yes, yes, uh, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Just just in name. So yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. No, this is wonderful. It's wonderful. I mean, I, mean, I, I have plans for that day. I mean, you know, I'm going to try and get out of them without causing too much stress at home, you know, so I can come and check it out. But, if I, but the only reason I won't be there is because I just have plans already. But um, this is wonderful. Just wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. And Mr. Hurd? Second. Except one. Uh, sort of. Certainly, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the, the power issue, has that been resolved and set up? Your yes. Yes. Is that going to go through Dallin? Okay. That's the only thing I saw that. Okay. Thank you. It, it's not a really, they, they aren't things that take huge amounts of power. So a, you know, a 20 amp circuit or two 20 amp circuits will cover all the needs, so, which I think is, is available. No, I'm just having pre-town day <laughs> nightmares <laughs> yes. where people show up and they think every booth has a thing they can just plug in and they didn't ask for electricity. Well, it's just practice. They just go it. crazy. The dead mouse on me. <laughs> uh, sorry. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mahan. in the town day application. <laughs> <laughs> That's out of scope. No, no. Just I'm just kidding. Okay, so on a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Hurd for approval of the bikeway block party. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Best Thank of luck with it. Hope the weather holds up. Oh, we do too. Thank you. Uh, there is no right brain date, so. Yeah. It's looking good so yeah. far. Yeah, Please. it does look good. Yeah. Everyone's invited. Great. Huh? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will now move on to the consent agenda, which has several items. Item four is the minutes of meetings of July 22nd, 2024, and August 5th, 2024. Uh, item five is two requests for contractor drain layer licenses. Item six is reappointment, reappointments to the Permanent Town Building Committee for Peter Martini and Alan Reedy, both for terms to expire June 30th, 2027. Item seven is approval for switch box art. Item eight is acceptance of funds for the town day donations that we've received. Item nine is the Hammontash run on March 9th, 2025, early request for that one. Item 10, is a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on September 20, 14th, 2024 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for the Stratton School Family Outing Fundraiser. Item 11 is a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on September 21, 2024 at David Lemsen Way for the Town Day Beer Garden. Item 12 is a request for Oktoberfest at the Old Schwamm Mill on October 5th, 2024 from noon to four. Uh, and uh, item 13 is a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on October 5th, 2024 at the Old Straw Mill for the Oktoberfest event, 12 and 13 for the same event. Uh, the only thing I have on the reappointments for the Permanent Town Building Committee, they're asking for the signature of the chair. That signature line right now has Mr. Helmut, so if we vote this, we'll change that and I'll sign it. Um, so with that, I'll turn to board members for any uh, motions. Move approval. Okay. Any other comment? Uh, Mrs. Mahan. If I could just ask the chair, and I know it being on the consent agenda is the proper, proper legal acknowledgement that we need, but if you could just read off, um, which will also make another acknowledgement of the board, the donors for town day, since there aren't that many anyways in terms of the larger donors. Sure. Okay. So we have, thank you, Mr. Mahan. So th this, uh, as of September 3rd, I think that this is the, the, the full list. 
Uh, we have received donations from Jimmy Stairhouse, Key Funeral Homes, Leader Bank, Legacy at Arlington Center, Tara Lee Realty Trust, Watertown Savings Bank, Gibson Sotheby Real Estate, First Baptist Church, and A Place to Grow. Thank and we will, um, yeah, that, those are a matter of public record, what has been received there for the event. Um, any other comments, questions? All right, so on the consent agenda, motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that is a unanimous vote. Uh, next is item 14, licenses and permits. Uh, for approval, common vitular license for the Vintage Tea and Cake Company at 677 Massachusetts Avenue uh, at the corner of Water Street. I believe the applicant will be joining us through Zoom. Good evening. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hi. Yeah, if you could just identify yourself and tell us a little bit about the application. Of course. Uh, my name is Adele Donegan. I um, am the owner of the Vintage Tea and Cake Company. Um, we are a catering company, but also um, we have two locations, two tea rooms, uh, one in Belmont and one in Lexington. Um, I am an Arlington resident, and um, I'm super excited to be um, uh, hopefully bringing another tea room to Arlington Center. Great. Thank you. Um, and I'll turn to board members for any questions or uh, motions. Mrs. Mahan. Uh, move approval subject to all conditions. And um, I want to say welcome. I'm very excited by this. Very excited by your maintenance plan, believe it or not. I, um, <laughs> no, the fact that you've included it and, and it, sh it shows me, you know, this is definitely something you're familiar with and you know the framework and the matrix and what needs to be done. And um, um, I know this is going to be a thriving, I'm really excited to looking forward to see exactly what the business is when it's running. You roll up your sleeves and you get things going. And I know how difficult it is in terms of success rates for anything in, in the uh, food industry, as well as it's really your second family uh, <laughs> for mm -hmm. your commitment, as well as um, either other family or employees who pretty much become your family because you spend so much time with them. So thank you so much and um, I look forward to seeing you when you open. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Second. Second by Mr. Hurd. Any other? Uh, Mr. Diggins. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and I just love the diversity that, that we have here in town of places to, uh, to eat. And this just adds to it. And you took the word out of my mouth about the maintenance plan. I mean, it's all, <laughs> it is a good maintenance plan. You know, uh, it's, it's very thorough. You know, and so, so, so yes, I mean, thank you very much for, uh, for being not only paying that much attention, but also being able to communicate it. So. Um, welcome to town. Hope, hope you're thank successful. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, and I'll add on the application, the, uh, the interior plan is as good as we've seen uh, for, for uh, what you're planning there, right down to the separation of the tables in front. Um, so on a motion for approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, all in favor say aye. 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 Best of luck. Thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you all in person. Thank you. Sure. Okay, now we're on to open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or a request. So with that, I see nobody in our chambers for open forum. Anybody wish to participate through Zoom? Seeing no hands okay. raised at this time. That, that concludes open forum for this oh, evening. One oh, hand. One hand, okay. I'll promote them now. Oh, I think it's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. And with that, we will move on to traffic rules and orders and other business. Item 15 is a hearing for a public shade tree removal for the Stratton Safe Routes School Project. John Alessi, our senior transportation planner, will be making that presentation, I believe, through Zoom. Yes. And um, for those members of the public, this had been approved and discussed um, during town meeting. There was a, there was a presentation on this. 
Uh, and with that, I'll say good evening to Mr. Lessie. Good evening, select board members, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my name is John Alessi. I'm the senior transportation planner for the town. I'm joined by the um, consultant for the town, Amy Archer, who works for Par Corporation um, in regards to the Stratton Safe Route to School project. Um, the requested action by the select board this evening is to approve the um, tree removal plan for this project. Um, before I hand it off to Amy, to speak a little bit about the project and the um, tree removal plan, I just want to give a little bit of background on the Stratton Safe Route to School project. This is based on a 2019 grant that the town received from Mass DOT, and the purpose of the project is to create um, safe and a safe and accessible walking route to the Stratton Elementary School. And since 2019, there have been several public engagement events that have been held in order to have the community inform the design that we're at today. There was an in-person public information session in June 2019. In November 2020, 2021, there was a virtual public meeting regarding the conceptual design for the project. And in January 2023, there was a virtual 25% design public design hearing that was held by um, MassDOT and our consultant here, Amy. So, um, and as you know, we um, I came to this board and to town meeting in regard to the right-of-way acquisition plan for this project, which hasn't been finalized yet. So I should be coming before this board later in the fall to discuss that. So the consultant for this project is Amy Archer, and she's gonna talk a little bit about the tree removal plan and I'll hand it off to her right now. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Good evening, everybody. Uh, if it is okay with the board, I'll share my screen. I have a couple of figures to present about the current and proposed trees, and then a table to summarize the impacts and mitigation. Is everybody able to see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, great. All right, as John mentioned, the project is a safe routes to school project for the Stratton Elementary School positioned along Mountain Avenue. Um, the project lengths extend starting almost right from the front entrance of the school, a couple hundred feet along Wheeler Lane, a couple hundred feet along Mountain Avenue down to Dixon almost 600 feet along Dixon Avenue from Mountain Avenue to Hemlock Street, and then suddenly along Hemlock Street, about a quarter of a mile from Dixon Ave to Brattle Street. Within the existing project limits, there is sidewalk along both sides of Hemlock along its southern portion, and then along the western side of Hemlock in its northern portion. But there's currently no sidewalk along Dixon, and there's no sidewalk along Mountain Avenue. Uh, in various areas of the project, some of the existing sidewalk is either not curb separated, not concrete, or not wide enough to meet current ADA standards. So the intent of the project is to make sure that the network is expanded to connect all the way to the front entrance of the school along Mountain Avenue, and to make sure that all components of that network are up to ADA compliance meeting the width requirements, the slope requirements, and having accessible pedestrian ramps along the route. Some of the other elements that this project entails, just to give you a, a little bit of a broader sense, there are many areas where the sidewalk network is crossing side streets without pedestrian striping. We don't have any crosswalks or the crosswalks that are there don't meet high visibility standards. We have some sight line issues, particularly around curves within the geometry of the road and along some of the intersections. And then finally, some of the intersections have quite an expanse of pavement uh, and it leads to some ambiguity over who has the right of way when drivers are approaching from different directions. That can lead to additional lack of safety for the students trying to cross. When the vehicles aren't even sure which vehicle has the right of way, they tend to be paying less attention to the kids trying to walk along the sidewalk. So we are trying to make sure we're addressing all of those issues. So as we advance the project, we are proposing, as I mentioned, ADA compliant sidewalks along the entirety of Hemlock Street, the west side in its entirety, 
the east side mimicking the extents that have sidewalk today. We're adding sidewalk to Dixon and we're adding sidewalk to Mountain. In order to do so, we do have to impact some public shade trees. We had um, three site walks with MASTA attendees, PAR attendees, and the tree warden from the town to try to discuss which trees we felt were in good health and we should try to save different measures that we could try to put in place to save those uh, and which ones had to be impacted based on the project. So we really did try to go through and spare what we could, only impact what we had to. Um, as the project has progressed, we're currently beyond 100% design, we're advancing to PS&E. Um, as I said, this has gone through review by both the town's tree warden and MassDOT. What we have here now, I'll give you a quick walk through the project from its northern limit right near the entrance to the school down to the southern end of Hemlock where we connect to Brattle. Um, looking at the visual, the first two are gonna be existing conditions and then the second two images will be the proposed condition. And then I'll give you a balance of how many trees we are impacting and how many trees we're replacing with the project. So any tree on the current slide and the next slide that's green is an existing tree that's gonna remain. So there are several trees within the project limits that we are able to maintain. We don't have to touch them. We're able to improve the sidewalk or expand the sidewalk network without impact. Um, you can see along Mountain Avenue, an extension of the sidewalk on Wheeler Lane to connect a piece that isn't there today. And then the addition of sidewalk on Dixon does hit a handful of trees right in that area. So we are adding sidewalk where it doesn't exist today in order to complete this network to the school. There's pretty steep embankment on the properties. So the addition of the sidewalk requires some regrading at the back of the sidewalk. Um, so in the areas that we're looking at here, if there's a tree indicated with the red dot, that's an existing tree that we either need to remove as part of the project, or we are going to remove and transplant. There were two trees that as we talked this through with the tree warden, were still young enough in their life that we feel confident we can extract the root ball, reposition them to the back of the new proposed sidewalk, and those trees will still grow very healthy the way they have been over the last, I believe it's only been a year or two since they were planted in these two locations. As we continue down the corridor, picking up here around Janet and Governor Road and continuing south to Brattle, you'll see we do impact some more trees, mostly on the east side. Um, right now, there are trees along that edge that have extensively heaved the sidewalk are growing within only a one and a half to two foot grass buffer, but have expanded well beyond that and are overlapping the curb line, are even bumping out into the road edge and are starting to crack some of the road edge. So now I'm gonna flip to the proposed. So now here on the proposed, the green trees that were shown in the first two are still there. Those are trees within the project limits that we are not touching. They're gonna to remain as they are. The red still indicates a tree that either needs to be removed or transplanted. And those bluish trees that are a slightly different shape with kind of the um, five star peg in the middle, those are either new trees or they also include the two transplanted trees. So you'll see that we've paired a new tree everywhere that there's a tree being removed. So anywhere that we had to remove a tree, essentially what we're doing is we're installing the sidewalk and if the position of the sidewalk had to hit an existing tree, we're planting a new similar type tree behind the new sidewalk. For the entirety of the project limits, all existing trees that are needing to be impacted by the expansion or compliance with ADA of the sidewalk network, all of those trees are currently within the right of way. We are trying to keep all of the proposed trees also within the right of way, but there are two areas where we have to replace a tree that will stagger the line with a private property, or in order to get it behind the sidewalk, the back of sidewalk goes right up to the property line, the new tree would have to be placed on the private property. As we are working through the right of way, which John mentioned a little bit ago, we are coordinating that with those property owners as well. They will have input into what type of trees they are and where exactly they fall on their property. 
Uh, and they would also have to accept that those trees would then be either what, as I mentioned, one partially on a property and one on a property. Um, as I mentioned a little while ago, we are reconfiguring a few of the intersections to reduce excessive pavement. Two of those intersections are shown on the screen now. One is right near the bottom. It's the corner of Dixon and Hemlock. We're tightening that up a little bit. And then we're tightening the radius where Hemlock turns up Yerksa because there is such a flat curve there. People take that curve really, uh, really quickly today. And we wanna make sure that the students that are gonna be coming out of Yerksa Road and Knowles Farm have the ability to cross here with slower vehicle speeds. Uh, so in the area where we're tightening up that corner, we couldn't put additional trees on the hemlock one because there are a lot of underground utilities there that we would have been in conflict with with the tree roots, but we were able to add a couple new trees to the Yerksa Road hemlock intersection. So you'll see two additional new trees there. And then as I continue down the corridor, again, our intent was to replace every tree that had to be removed with a tree of similar nature in almost exactly the same location or at least within the front of the same property. Um, so as we come down, you'll see appearing here of a removed and a replaced. This one that's being removed was also close to utilities, so we moved that one a little bit down. Uh, we are adding one additional tree here. And then there's also a intersection uh, radius adjustment at Governor Road. We were able to add one more new tree there. So if we look at that in summation, just to give you a tally, we are removing 12 trees of that 10 are actual removal to our transplants. And then we are going to be planting 16 trees. That does include the two transplants. So in the final condition, there will be four more trees within the corridor than there are in the existing condition. And as I mentioned, we worked hand in hand with the town, um, with the town tree warden to try to propose trees that are a very similar nature to the ones that we're removing. So over the next years, as those trees grow in, they should come to about the same size as the trees that are being removed and fill in the corridor, very similar to, um, to the way the corridor looks today. That is everything I had. I can open it up to questions from the board, questions from the public. Um, we can certainly go back to any of these images if you'd like me to zoom in at all. I know they're possibly a little bit small on the screen. Thank you, Ms. Archer. Mr. Lessie, do you have anything uh, further before we turn to the board? Or? Um, no, Mr. Chair, I just want to thank Amy for that presentation. And we're, um, again, we're happy to answer questions about the project. Okay, great. Now, th thank you for the presentation. Before I turn to, board, to the board members, just a request for clarification. And it looks like it's the, set, it's the last proposed condition slide. So it'll be the next one. Between Lansdowne and... and um, Pine Street, it looks like there's two trees, there's one tree being removed. Is that two trees going side by side or is that just one tree that replaces it? Yeah, it is two trees. So that tree is a slightly larger tree and the um, back of the sidewalk abuts a wall. So we can't put the tree beyond the sidewalk. We do have to keep it in the buffer. So as we were working with Masta and the tree warden, True street trees should be a little smaller than the ones that manage to grow in this buffer um, that exists out there today. So we are putting two there in front of that one property to replace the one. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, then I'll turn to board members. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? Um, on that exact same slide, and I apologize. I think you answered this, but I couldn't see the cursor. If, sure. the, if the answer you gave if the cursor was on the tree that I'm gonna ask about, only because I can, <laughs> I can see getting this question or any one of my colleagues when we walk into Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. Um, so on the second proposed conditions um, slide that Ms. the chair just referenced, the, the between Lansdowne Road and Janet Road, um, just because I know how people are with trees, nine times out of 10, they want them right back. So I do see one tree that um, is in red to be removed, closer to Lansdowne Road, is being replaced, but it looks a little bit of a distance, perhaps not even in front of the home. Um, and 
I think you gave the reason for why that's happening, but can you just tell me again so that if I, someone says to me, why am I not getting a tree back in front of my house, if that's my house, the answer is? Yeah, so this one, we did have some conflicts with utilities. There are quite a few in Hemlock and then there are services to the sides. So this was an area where it was difficult to replace the tree back where we were removing it. Um, we are trying to keep it in front of the same house. It is in front of the same property, definitely. Um, and as I mentioned, I think there is some flexibility when the resident engineer is out there. If a particular property owner wants a slight shift, they can usually accommodate that. Um, so I think that that is something that we could adjust slightly if needed, as long as it's still obviously not a conflict with the utility. Okay. And I just have a second sort of rhetorical question for Mr. Lessie, John. Um, one of the things that I th think is so fantastic uh, about Arlington, the tree committee, the tree warden, and the planning department is uh, one of the programs that you all have started uh, in terms of uh, not only adopting a tree when it goes in, but also having um, the ability to go online to the town of Arlington webpage, look at where these trees are that need to be adopted, meaning please water this crazy little babies, especially when we have a crazy climate change is real, hot summer, and there's not much rain. So, so rhetorical question, am I correct to assume that um, after all this work is done, new trees are put in, that they will go into that program? And if that's the case, can you just give me three or four sentences again about what that program exactly is? So thank you, Mrs. Mahan. I actually, I know that the program exists in Arlington. I'm not too familiar about who manages it or how it's run, but when the project's constructed, I can make sure that I get in contact with the project manager, whoever in the town um, oversees it, to make sure that the new plantings are going to be watered because when we put in these new trees, I believe that they're at a more vulnerable state just when they're planted. So making sure that they're getting watered is going to be important both for the, you know, the tree committee, the tree warden and the community as a whole and these residents. So uh, I'll assure you that I'll make sure that that work gets done when we're um, even before construction takes place. Okay. And I'll also leave it to our most uh, able town manager to oversee that so that Mr. Rademacher <laughs> and whoever else needs to know about it will. Thank you so much. That's it, thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Any other if, questions? If it adds some comfort, I will add, since MASTA is paying for the construction, their contractor will be responsible for making sure that the trees last, <coughs> excuse me, beyond the, uh, the initial install. Excuse me, sorry. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, Mr. Diggins? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, so just some good speaker, a little chance to recover. It, although this is a question, no problem, no problem. No, I totally, I totally understand. You know, so, so um, uh, a little nerdy question here. You know, do you have a, do you happen to know the the number? If you total up the the breaths, the DBHs for the trees that are going to be removed, you know, how that compares to the DBHs of the trees that are going to replace them? Yes. So we have done that comparison of the existing trees to be removed and the anticipated mature size of the future trees. And they are pretty similar. Sorry, I do have something in my throat right now. Okay, I'm a court reporter and I can't tell you how many times I've been in a courtroom on a major case and I just get that feather that just goes down the wrong way. And it's so it was perfectly fine while everyone else presented and it, it got me right when I had to go. So in the existing, I'm going to um, close out of that super quick. I was tallying this up um, as I coordinated with John earlier today because we thought this question may come up. So the existing trees, as I mentioned, there are 12. They have a combined DBH in their current grown condition, 225 inches. We've gone through the trees that between the tree warden and Mastot were proposed to replace those trees. A mix here of the species are shown. So there's some maple, some tupelo. Those are rather large trees. The sweet gum, the service berry, and the hawthorn will not grow quite as large because they're intended to be those street tree size. <clears throat> so the 16 final trees that will be put in place of the 12 that are being removed is closer to 300 inches. Great. 
If you could send um, this slide over I me, mean, mm -hmm. I'd really appreciate it. I mean, it's more, more curiosity, but also it's one of those that I mean, we, we, that we, yeah, so it would be good to have this answer for folks. So thank you. Thank you for doing the research. You know, or, Absolutely. Or, Absolutely. John, I will send you that spreadsheet when we get off and if you can share that with the town. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, now, this is a public hearing, so we don't have anybody in our chambers, but there may be people who wish to participate by Zoom. There was one person that was asking questions in the request to answer, so I'm going to promote them. Okay. And also, we have another hands raised at this time, too. Okay. Oh, I see it. Yeah, it just needed to be refreshed. I don't know okay. what was wrong with the. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Yeah, so, so, okay, so we have it. All right, fine. Uh, um, I think that they've been promoted. I can't see because this screen is shared. But if you were promoted to panelist, um, Ms. Wadman, you are able to speak at this time. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Ms. Wadman. Uh, hi. Uh, sorry, my husband is also on his phone, so there's a little echo. Um, yes, I'm at 158 Mountain Ave, one of the homes uh, impacted uh, by the tree re removal and the sidewalks. I'm right on the corner where uh, Dixon meets Mountain, um, and I have a couple questions about the location of the new trees, whether or not those trees will be positioned within the sidewalk or will be moved further onto my property. Um, that's question number one. Question number two is with regard to snow removal for the new uh, sidewalks. I'm especially interested in this, uh, the space between the corner of Dixon and Mountain and my home, which is quite steep. Um, you know, even at the edge of my driveway, it's quite steep. We get tend to get all this, the snow from the entire street dumped in this corner of Mountain Ave. And then um, we were not aware. Uh, the third is um, a comment, which is that we were not aware of the tree removals until uh, this meeting right now. No one contacted. Nobody contacted us, and I'm fairly certain that none of our neighbors are aware either. Um, and then I had uh, another question about um, what's the question about the the. Well, does it affect the redevelopment of the property? It's my husband Ed. Okay. Hello. Oh. Hi, Mr. Wardman. Yeah, does it read uh, when the the property is redeveloped? Is that going to change the sidewalks and taking a property? Does it change it at all? Yeah. So, the size so, of the new building? And, and some of this, what we may want to do is put you in touch with Mr. Alessi during the week just to maybe I reached get out to him. Okay. Two but, months but, ago. But while we're here. To participate in this meeting. Okay. While we're here, could you just help us a little bit? You, you're on the corner of Mountain and Dixon, is that right? We're at 158 Mountain Ave, so we're the first house up on the left on Mountain Ave. There's a big oak tree, which I pursue, which I see is going to, going to stay there. Okay. And that's on the right side of our driveway. Right. right. And we participate. You're facing our house, the left. Oh, side. excuse me. The left side is you're facing our driveway. Yeah, yeah. And okay. the maple tree is the one on the on the right, and that's going to be removed. Right, and that's that's not your house. That's your neighbor's house. I, I guess right now, maybe if we can speak to, we heard a little bit about flexibility on the trees. One, but two, maybe in terms of timing. And, and, and three, and tr maybe timing of the project too, because you know, there should be an opportunity for some inquiry here from if, if it's your property that's directly affected. So Mr. Lessie, if you could just talk to us maybe a little bit about the timing of this so that there might be an opportunity for some of these questions to be answered. Sure, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So the, a lot of these questions I believe are going to come up once we have the finalized right-of-way plans, I know that Amy's been working with MassDOT to get those 
um, finalized. And at that point, the town is then going to go through a very formal process of alerting each of the individual affected properties along the project corridor. Even if there's an inch of someone's property that is going to be impacted, the town is going to be responsible for um, sending out a letter of intent to the property owner, um, scheduling an in-person meeting with the property owners to look at the engineering designs to so and talking through with our town engineer, Bill Coppathorn, about what the impacts are going to be. Um, we're waiting until we receive those finalized plans from MassDOT. It's my understanding that could happen the next month or two, and the town will be hiring an independent appraiser to kind of handle a lot of this work. So at that point, we're going to have little meetings with property owners about the specific impacts, including trees. Okay, great. Thank, thank you, Mr. Ellis. And then I should say as well, again, for the public's benefit too, tonight's hearing is really limited to authorization to remove trees it, it, just because they're in the public way a hearing comes before the select board so the only action we're taking tonight is to authorize the removal of 12 trees if we vote that way um, when that happens we always ask how are the trees going to be replaced because that's very important to us so that's where we are now and, and, and I, hopefully mr lessie's clarification there is going to be time for further discussion to address your concerns, and, and that perhaps is why you haven't been notified directly because that's further down on the project. We're just dealing with tree removal this evening. So, um, well, the first we heard about tree removal is when I uh, logged into this uh, meeting and I reached out uh, in July in regards to, hey, I haven't heard anything about the sidewalk and the, and the bike lane since 2023. And I was wondering what's going on. I haven't seen anything in the mailbox. And I have my cell phone, my email, and all that stuff's been available. I haven't gotten anything about that either from DOT or from the, or for, from the town. So, I mean, it's kind of concerning. Well, you're, you're going to give approval to remove trees way in advance of a project being really brought up with the public here. Um, are, is the uh, bike lane still going in? Is it going to be one-way traffic on Mountain Ave? like we discussed or which was presented uh, in 2023. Is this part of that project? The yeah, sidewalks are. are. The sidewalks are going to be on the on the street the last the last presentation yeah. I attended. So the sidewalk positioning hasn't changed. The intent on both Dixon and Mountain is to narrow the road a little in order to accommodate a portion of the sidewalk. A portion of the sidewalk does have to be beyond where the edge of the road currently is, but it is still within the right of way near your property. The bike lanes are not included anymore. MassDOT did finally agree that the roadways within the project area are rather steep for particularly elementary schools to be trying to ride up, and we felt that it may be unsafe for them to try to run, ride down. So the bike lanes are not included. Okay. What about the direction? Is it is it a one-way street now? Yeah. So. The, there was someone from the town as we continued coordination directly through John's uh, department that said that Wheeler, although it is signed like it is a one way, is not technically. The residents on Wheeler are allowed to travel in either direction from their driveway. So with that, MassDOT was uncomfortable changing the direction of traffic. So the movements are going to stay the way that they are now. So that seven, I believe it's seven to nine thirty or seven thirty to nine one way restriction on mountain is what's going to be held, but otherwise it'll function as it does today. Great. Okay. Thank, thank you, Mr. And Mrs. Wadman, and and I know there'll be further follow up. Um, I believe there may be one other person on the. It was both. Of oh, both. Of okay. Them. All right. All right. So th th thank you for your participation tonight and. Uh, I know Mr. Lessie will be, well, you'll be in contact with Mr. Lessie and the town will be in contact with you as this project moves along. Great. Okay. Uh, because Mr. it Mahan? is concerning. I will... oh. Okay. Um, Mrs. Mahan? I'd like to, and this has already been done and my brain is, has frozen, move approval for the public shade tree removal request for Stratton Safe Routes to School project. Second, oh, and stuck. I just say, I mean, I think one of the things we like doing least on this board is approving the removal of trees, but you know, safety is paramount. And 
I think as far back as when I was on TAC, we were doing, talking about the lack of sidewalks in the Stratton area, in the straight, safe route to schools. So it's good to see some real proge progress here where the kids can have a main route that they can jump on to get to school safely because in that area, it's very, very important to get this done. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, any other comments? Mr. Diggins? Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to support this also. And, and some of us adults use those sidewalks as we walk to other adults' places. We are uh, there. I know a lot of people drive, you know, but, but some of us walk a lot. You know, we, yeah, and, we'll, we'll, and, and so, yeah, yeah, it would be great to have sidewalks there. And, and um, once again, just a really good job, great job in, um, in, in the presentation and, and the selection and process. You know, and, and I just want to add that uh, I do have that slide that I asked for so you don't have to send it so thank you okay. great thank thank you mr. Diggins okay so any a motion for approval by miss mrs. Mihano I just want to note that um, mr. Wallman has his hand raised again is public comment over yeah public comment over and what we can do again is um, I, I think we'd mentioned it during the question and answer during those questions. Um, Mr. Wadman or Mr. Lushy, it sounds like you've been contacted by Mr. Wadman previously. If you could follow up with him, um, we'd appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Um, so a, a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Okay, it's a unanimous vote. Okay, thank you, Ms. Archer. Thank you, Mr. Lushy. Thank you. Thank you to the board yeah. members. And, and, and just while you're both here, and we'll say this, I, I just want to reiterate what you had said during the presentation. There is more work to be done here in terms of where trees are to be relocated or, or, or moved um, to work with property owners to, to, to find a suitable location within reason here for what, for what you presented. I, hopefully I'm stating that accurately and paraphrasing a little bit, but that's, that's uh, our understanding. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Item 16 is an update on double polls. And I put this on because I thought we'd have a relatively short agenda. Um, and and we're, we're still okay on timing. I haven't talked about it in a while. If I could ask Ms. Marr, there, there was a few items that I added, um, just reference material. And um, let's see. The double poll summary report, maybe we can start with each one. Okay, and that's not that large, but I, I will give a little context here. So again, every six months, utilities are required to report to the Department of Public Utilities their progress on removing double polls. New double polls, which is what this is, a summary that you're seeing, are polls that were created after January 31st, 2004. Um, and so what you see here is as of April 30th, 2024, there are 51 new polls as reported by Verizon. Verizon has responsibility to report new po double polls in the town of Arlington. At the beginning of the time period, which is six months previously, that number was at 59. To provide a little context back, and we've been doing this for a little while. Um, I know Mrs. Mahan was doing it before. Um, we were all on the board, but um, since I've been on the board, the first report that Verizon made to DPU was for October 2019. At that time, there was 108 double polls in Arlington. It went up for a while. Now it's down to 51. That's the good news on the, on the decline, but I want to provide a little bit more context. Um, so if we can go by the double poll detail by date. Again, this is all on the Department of Public Utilities website. We have a link to it and we'll provide information on the town's website. Um, this is a listing of all 51 double pole locations um, in the town of Arlington. There's a statute that concerns the removal of double poles, chapter 164, section 34B, that says that once a double pole is created, the utility has 90 days to remove the double pole. Of the 51 poles in Arlington, all of them as of April 30th are beyond 90 days. This couple that were right at that time period. The oldest one listed is on Wachusett Ave. That's been a double pole since 2014. And there's a number since 15 going forward. Um, 
I raise this because one of I mean, th there's one other list they have. I wanted to raise that just to talk about the age. The last one reference here. Um, I actually, I guess I just did it by date installed. Um, we had received, Mrs. Mahan had received an inquiry late, earlier this year from someone on Warren Street who was concerned about a double poll. Warren Street doesn't show up on the list of double polls. And on the way to the meeting tonight, I drove by and there is indeed still a double poll there. There's also a poll that looks like it's about to tip over. We almost need a tip over list. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, just as an update, is a the statute in the bill um, that the governor had put forward earlier this year. So um, that reference there cites Chapter 164, Section 34B. Earlier this year in the Municipal Empowerment Act bill that the governor put forward and that the governor and lieutenant governor had listening sessions throughout the state, heard from town managers and mayors, I believe Mr. Feeney, participated or provided input, maybe not specifically on this issue, but as a result of that issue, they brought forward the Municipal Empowerment Act. And one of the proposals in the Empowerment Act is that a town could enforce Section 34B by imposing fines for those utilities that failed to replace poles within 90 days. Now, I just pointed out that every single double pole as reported by Verizon is out of compliance. One of the difficulties with the statute, it's been a difficulty for years, is it's, there's no enforcement mechanism. Um, unfortunately, um, this, the Municipal Empowerment Act did not pass either the House or the Senate. In the House version, I believe this section, as it relates to double polls, was removed in its entirety. In the Senate bill, uh, there was a study committee, a proposed study committee to report back in a couple of years, and, and it's, it's one of those things where, where the administration has gone out, worked with cities and towns, and it's a problem in a lot of communities, and, and this is an issue where I think they were onto something, and maybe 90 days wasn't the right day before starting fines. Maybe it was a year, maybe it was two years from now with, with a lesser period once the, the company's caught up, but I think it's really unfortunate that something like this doesn't even get out of committee. And, and none of our legislative delegation was on either committee, but we talk about speaking to our legislators, we talk about communities. This one felt like an easy one as far as trying to find a way that both could work with the utilities, recognize you're not gonna replace them overnight, but also recognize, like if you're on Wachusett Ave and you've been waiting mm -hmm. since 2014, something should be done uh, about this. So that was my update. I thought it was timely in terms of where we stand. There's still an informal session, but I do think if we have an opportunity to talk to our delegation, it bears repeating. I know Senator Friedman has put in bills over the years that, that have not gone anywhere in terms of this issue, but the, the more communities that talk about this, um, Channel 5 had a story from Lexington early this year it just seems like that's a good way to go. The last thing I'll say is that we have had different discussions. Mr. Feeney's had discussions with representatives of Verizon. I think we should still do that. The one thing I, I still think is critical is that the list needs to be audited because I just brought the example of Warren Street. Um, it doesn't even show up. There's, there's two, um, it's gonna be a couple locations on Mass Ave. I know aren't on the list and, and encourage members of the public. There's a link to it. If there's double pull issues on anybody's street, get in touch with us because we will keep compiling this. So um, I went on for a little longer than I expected, but I, I, I think we've been doing this. We've been hearing from people and I thought it was appropriate to tie in the legislative discussion along with the double poll discussion. So it doesn't require a vote, but if any other members have any comments, I'm happy to. Mrs. Mahan? Of course I do, right? Um, it, I, I don't want to um, suggest or ask uh, agreement uh, that it is an exercise in futility, because, um, or utility, ha <laughs> <laughs> um, But I was wondering if um, perhaps the chair and or the town manager or town council, is this something we should, A, think about filing a home rule petition 
um, just to bring the conversation to that level and be um, if we do do that, um, should we change the language that, to something that says beyond the 90 days or 12 months, beyond the 90 days or 24 months? The, but the, the main question is, um, and sometimes, you know, and people go back and forth on this to say, you know, you file the home rule, you file the home rule legislation, um, you have about a, you know, 0.1% point, point chance to get it through. Um, but then there's other people that say, what are you doing to be proactive to this and, and tr trying to get this, um, you know, whether it's completely taken out or sent to a study committee, which is no person's land, no man, no woman's land. Um, but I'd, I'd like to somehow, if a home rule petition is a viable route, I'd be interested in what the chair and our town manager would have to say to that. And if it's not, tell me that. I'll, I'll go first because I, I, I don't think a home rule petition okay. in this instance, and, and I understand the frustration, but it, it, it seems to me that this has got to be something that it's a whole group of communities getting together. Now, I know the Mass Municipal Association supported, I believe they supported this, and, and it seems like it's communities coming together rather than individual on, on the fees. But I don't know, Mr. Feeney, you feel any differently? I would concur, Mr. Chair, and I think <clears throat> perhaps I could be most effective in assisting by, you know, working to get any missing double polls onto the list because, as we have seen, they do make some progress, albeit slowly. So, uh, you know, from the town manager's office perspective, if there were any that folks know of that were missing, I'd be happy to compile those and work with our uh, government affairs representative to make sure they are accurately depicted on the list so that uh, they are there for record keeping and action at some point. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And, and, and I will say, I mean, the DPU still has jurisdiction over this. It, it, you know, that may be a place to go if we've, we're finding that there's a lot of polls that are not reported just to, because it's an open docket there just to report back um, from, the, from the town requesting more detail than in order requiring updates because there's some jurisdiction there. But um, I, I applaud the Healy administration for what they did in the Municipal Empowerment Act. And, and I think that's where, you know, encourage them to, to do it again if this doesn't go anywhere in an informal session. And, and unfortunately, probably won't. But I mean, it's, it's that, to me, um, maybe pressure comes that way. Uh, Mr. Diggins? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So it was the Municipal Empowerment Act that did not get out of committee? That's right. And that, that covered a whole host of things. Right, right. And so it didn't get out of the initial committee? Well, he, because, like, there's two levels, right? Normally, you, you get reported out of the first committee, but then you don't get out of the second committee. So it, it didn't get reported out of the first one. Actually, it's certainly not. Attorney uh, 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 Cunningham? Mr. Chair, it, yeah, it did get out of the initial committee. Okay. Um, it was reported to House Ways and Means and was reported favorably. <clears throat> um, did not get to the floor for a vote, so it wasn't passed. Okay. By the se there were separate competing bills at that point, from, as the chair uh, indicated, in the Senate side and the House side, and those were never consolidated via conference committee and wasn't passed as one piece of legislation. Yeah, but as we all know, I mean, uh, it was a bit of a, 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 a cluster, I mean, uh, towards the end of the, a lot of stuff did not like get, get passed. Because and, and, and uh, normally what I was gonna say, if it didn't get out of the first committee, it was be like, let's find out what happened there. I mean, why it didn't get out, like who, who maybe is supporting this, I mean, but it got out of the first one, it got stuck in, uh, in ways and means, I mean, and go ahead. Please. It was in the, the Joint Committee on Municipalities and Regional Government, and it, it, it did get out of there. Yeah. Um, but it, it, the legislative session runs um, on a two-year cycle, and this is an election year, so it essentially, and I know the Chair indicated an informal session persists, but for all part, intents and purposes, yeah. it ended on July 31st and won't really start up in earnest until a new body is in oh, yeah. place after the election. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. And, and as we know, I mean, like some big things did not get through yep. the formal session. They're hoping that they'll get like to the economic, um, what is it called again, you know, uh, improvement something, you know, which is a biggie, you know. So, so yeah, you know, it, 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 I think it's probably just I mean, going to be trying to make it happen the next session, but that's such a, the, the Municipal Empowerment Act is such a big one, I would think, I mean, with the governor's support, you know, hey, you really think there's no chance in this, this cycle, huh? Yeah, I'm sorry. Attorney Cunningham? 
I, Mr. Chair, I, I, I do think it's unlikely that it gets addressed in this present session. Uh, obviously, I don't know that for sure. Uh -huh. It would depend on the, the legislature's actions, uh, but typically that's not how it works. It is, it's a pretty comprehensive piece of legislation that the governor is pursuing. Um, obviously, there are special interests at play um, that have a say on some things that may be included or not included in the final version. Um, I don't know the specifics of this particular bill, but I do know it's an important uh, piece. The governor has sought input from local municipalities, so I would think that uh, it would come back again. Right. Th th thank you, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Uh, anything further? Okay. Um, so that was just an update. Um, and, and, and one final, um, Ms. Mahan raised a good point of what can we do here in Arlington. I think that the other thing we can continue to do is work with the town manager to continue to contact Verizon again for the most, what we consider the most egregious like double polls. I know Mr. Feeney is, is doing that. We'll continue to do that. Great, thank you. Okay, so item 17, future select board meetings. Um, we are scheduled through September 23rd. We don't have anything for October, November, December. And in talking with Ms. Maher, we thought it would be good to get at least three months um, scheduled at this time. So if you can check your calendars, um, and again, I'm gonna make suggestions, see how they work for people, but for October, um, we're thinking October 7th and 21st. Seven. Yep. Okay, that sounds good. And just on the 21st, I may have to come in remote. Okay. But I'll no longer before then. All right. Um, and, and I did, just so board members know, knowing Mr. Talmuth wasn't going to be here tonight, I did check with him, and he, he is good on, um, on those dates. Uh, in November, um, Thanksgiving is November 28th. So, Happy birthday to me. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, and Arthur Kelly. Go ahead. Sorry. So on that one, um, we're looking at maybe, let's see, November 4th and November 18th. I was just wondering if you could go for the day before the election. I'm fine with it. I don't think the oh, clerk's, I don't okay, think the, yeah, that, I forgot about that. Yeah, I don't think the clerk's going to have is going to be involved. I mean, um, I'd in the, say probably not. Yeah, I mean, but but trying to find an alternative. I mean, I prefer the day before the election as opposed to the day after. I imagine the six is just going to be exhausted. You know, <laughs> so so it's like you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, October 28th is we're not until we, we should have two mem meetings, and I think that's preferable to the mm. Thanksgiving week. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm totally fine. I just thought, yeah, I thought if we were going to get hung up on anything, it was going to be on okay, the Okay, and the 11th yeah. is Veterans Day. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm glad I we're going to. Probably the, unless you wanted to meet the week of Thanksgiving, not the 4th yeah. and 18th is probably. I think. I should not have said anything. No, yeah. that's yeah. a good point, <laughs> but I mean, I think we could do that. Yeah. The 4th and the, okay. Yeah, the 4th, 4th and, and the 18th. Yeah. Now. I think December raises a potential question on the on the date. What I was thinking originally was the second and the sixteenth. The thing about that is Thanksgiving is is the Thursday before. That would require the meeting to be posted before Thanksgiving. So that one maybe. And I know other nights are sometimes difficult for for members. How would December fourth and the sixteenth sound? I'm agree with that. Okay. Definitely. I mean, normally the, the second Wednesday of the month is a problematic month. Okay. But, but this is the first Wednesday, so that's okay. fine. Okay. All right. That, and that way, again, for our public yeah, posting purposes, that, that can take place on that Monday. And not to be a, a Scrooge yeah. or a Grinch, but if anyone's going to do it, it would be me. <laughs> um, just because of since what's happened since 2020, do we still want to shoot for the 16th as a 6 o'clock and then something afterwards? Or were you a chair? Or? I'd like to, to try to do that. Okay, that's fine. So the 16th will be a different start, start time? Yeah. Okay. An early start. Okay, thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. All right. So that, that covers this. Um, I'm not being a Scrooge. Yeah, no, that's saying that if you want to cancel yeah. it, you can. I'm oh, kind of being a Scrooge. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So yeah. that will cover. I can send an email to people just. Yeah. Okay, good. So that covers us through the, the end of the calendar year. Um, all right, on item 18, discussion and approval, letters regarding proposed MBTA development of ALY station, CSO issues. We received some drafts from Attorney Cunningham. Um, I don't know, Attorney Cunningham, if you have any...
comments on that, or Mr. Feeney or, or Mrs. Mahoney, or you were working on that as well with the town manager and Attorney Cunningham? Attorney I, Cunningham? I just wanted to thank uh, Mrs. Mahan and Mr. Feeney for their input on this, um, as well as the help of local advocacy groups who also provided us with information and assistance. We appreciate all of their efforts. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Okay, so we have two drafts, one to you know, Mr. Eng, the general manager and chief executive officer of the MBTA, and the other is to Governor Healy. Um, any comments, uh, Ms. Mahan? Um, one, I, I remember the chair, or I have a faulty, vague memory of wanting at perhaps at least one of these letters CC'd also to our congressional um, delegation. Am I correct to assume and do we do the Honorable Mara Healy Esquire, or do we just, whatever. Um, is that the one that we wanted to, uh, and I don't know what the right nomenclature is. No, no, is I, 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 I'm going to put that in the administrative. I, I oh. would, I agree. I, I think in this instance, Esquire comes out and, okay. and a T goes between Mara and Healy. To right. Like her middle okay. Initial, but the, and is that the letter, or was it both the letters you wanted, to, and I had a follow-up on that, that, that you wanted the congressional delegation because, um, I don't know if Mr. Feeney wants to sort of do a quick report on it, but when we were coming up with the drafts on the letter, um, uh, Attorney Cunningham uh, sort of left with the charge of following up his contacts over at DEP, um, and I'll be speaking about the LY variants and new business, but then um, the town manager, Mr. Feeney, had indicated he would follow up with uh, Congresswoman Clark's office. Can you speak to that? Can I ask Mr. Sure. Feeney? And then that might sort of guide whether you think it's one or both of the letters that the whole delegation should be CC'd to. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would think it would be wise to, in fact, include our entire federal delegation, but with respect to prior discussions we had had previously through uh, our congressperson's office is such that you know, we are hoping to tap the Army Corps of Engineers for potential uh, further study based on the review or results of more recent studies that were recently completed with uh, money provided by the Commonwealth. So those studies are still under review, and based on those uh, results, we may look for further study uh, with the assistance of the Army Corps of Engineers. So it would be wise, given that potential future ask, to uh, incorporate our delegation here, in my opinion. On one or both? Uh, on the one to the governor, on the one to um, Mr. Eng, or both? Um, I, I would recommend both. I'm not sure it, uh, I, I, it provides. And when we say congressional delegation, that means clock Warren Mackey? Okay. Yeah. Is that, is that, okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. And, and I, I would add, and I'm fine with that. We talked about that. I, I think we also talked about down the road, this, that this initial period on the you know, life, the, the redevelopment of the garage was certainly a primary concern in this letter. As far as like, reaching out to the delegation for the overall problem and finding funding, that, that I felt was critical to have the federal delegation notified by me. I think it makes sense to include them, as Mr. Feeney said. Okay, um, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, so, so a few things. I, I think I would just send I mean, the one to the governor. You know, because it seems like it's a, a superset I mean, of the the one to the the um, the, the um, chief. I'm sorry, the general manager. I mean, but both are fine. You know, uh, and with respect to the one to the general manager, I, mean, I will suggest that we also add the the executive director. I mean, of uh, the MBT advisory board. I, mean, I talked with him today, Brian Kane, I mean, and he's very much interested mm -hmm. in, in, in seeing the letter and having it as a part of, of the record. You know, so if people are fine with that, you know, um, that'd be great. You know, uh, and uh, just a couple of minor things I mean, to the letter, you know, uh, which if people don't want to do it, it's totally fine because I am happy to support both letters. You know, uh, there's a paragraph that is, I think it's the last paragraph that is in both letters. You know, and I think the my sense of the second to last sentence is uh, it says, however, we must ask that this redevelopment consider, and it just seems like the the redevelopment is the actor 
which is a kind of odd actor. I, mean, I think that sentence, I, mean, I would rework it a little bit if we had a chance. You know, uh, and it's not so much that it's confusing as much as it is. I mean, it just has you know an odd actor. You know, and and uh, and also this is more a, st a style thing for me when it comes to when I'm consuming information um, from others. You know, uh, I, I tend to. Um, use words like disastrous sparingly, you know, and, and so to me, it's like Katrina's a disaster, you know, uh, this is a very harmful uh, situation, so, so I would just suggest me replacing disastrous with, with harmful, me, and taking the potentially out, me, you know, and so instead of saying, well, it'll probably be, you know, disastrous, it's like, take the potentially out, and it is harmful, I mean, uh, and so just suggestion, and feel free to ignore it, and, uh, and on the letter to the governor, you know, there's a sentence, you know, the sewer, sewer discharge has also flooded street areas, leaving pedestrians to traverse hazardous, put more bluntly, gross conditions. And I just feel that the put more, grunts, grunt, more bluntly, gross conditions just kind of diminishes the impact, I mean, of the phrase before it, you know. I see what we're getting at there, but, but I just, uh, that's it, you know, I could go on and, and on, but, but I'll just leave it there. And once again, feel free to ignore these, you know, and I'm still very happy to support it, you know, fully. That's it, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Mrs. Mahan? How about, because um, I want to incorporate as much as we can, it's from all of us. Right. Um, in terms of the actor and that wording, if it, if it said in the last paragraph in both of these letters uh, that, that the, RFP for this development, consider and plan, mm -hmm. and then change the potentially disastrous impact to the harmful public health impact. Yeah. Only because I'm going to send you, and I already sent it to the chair, but where I haven't said it in new business yet, I didn't want to send it to the full board. I yeah. uh, also sent it to Mr. Feeney. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. be sending the yeah. rest of the board. Okay. Uh, something. Okay, cool. okay thank you. Yeah, sure. and, and if I could, I think those are good suggestions, Mr. Diggins. I, I had one just on the third paragraph, um, last sentence, when it says, when the Illife Brook overflows, untreated sewer discharges, um, floods parks, yards, and houses of residents in the surrounding area. Now, not every discharge does that, so um, I, I was thinking it might be more precise to, to say the overflows from the Illife Brook have, like, and I don't have the exact language here, but if we could maybe with your suggestion, what Mrs. Mahan said, if I could work with um, Attorney Cunningham, we'll make those changes and just get the letter out, but we'll have the authorization for this letter uh, with these minor oh, changes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 yeah, I mean, unless it's radically, I'm sorry, am I interrupting? No, no, go right ahead. Unless it's radically changed, I'm not gonna be reading okay. it again Is normally. Is that all right with you, Mr. Donovan? Okay. okay, okay. I have no changes, but certainly want to thank everyone who has been involved in the draft and the letter for the work that they've done. Okay, uh, I'd like to, Mr. Feeney? Oh. I did think of one uh, potential addition for the board to consider mm -hmm. on the second page at the uh, tail end of that top paragraph, and this is going off of what Ms. Mahan just said about the RFP, where the sentence ends, no new connections to the combined sewers must be considered now before the opportunity to implement them is lost. We could consider adding something along the lines of these requirements should be made clearly known to prospective joint development partners from the outset and prior to proposal submission. Okay. Great. So, so the act, the ask we are making of the T is a bit more specific and directly related to their request for proposals process. Okay, I'd like to move approval of both letters, um, adding the congressional delegation to both letters, adding the executive director, Brian King, to the MBTA letter, adding the um, suggestions um, that Mr. Diggins said regarding further defining the actor of the redevelopment with the RFP for the redevelopment and changing the language, potentially disastrous impact to harmful public health. Um, just a housekeeping matter on the governor taking out Esquire and adding T and ask the chair to oversee with <laughs> Mr. Feeney and Attorney Cunningham all those changes plus the changes that he cited. So that's my big long motion, which basically is 
to approve both letters to the MBTA and Governor. Great. Uh, Mr. Dickens? Thank you, Mr. I'll second that. Okay, great. All right. So we have a motion for approval, and thank, thank you for the detail, Ms. Mahan, because that's helpful in terms of putting that together. So a motion for approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so that's approved, thank you. And um, last this evening is new business, Ms. Maher? No new business, thank you. Okay. Attorney Cunningham? No new business, Mr. Chair, thank you. Okay. Mr. Feeney? No new business, thank you. Mr. Diggins? No new business. Mrs. Mahan. Ow, oh, I have three. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try to be fast. It's just 8.42. <laughs> I know. But, um, first one is, um, I, I titled it October Events. Um, just wanted to, October is a tough month for me, but I'm, gonna, I'm doing everything in terms of select board meetings and anything that's extra. Um, I plan on and um, will be purchasing my ticket tomorrow to the Rotary Club on October 22nd, where Many illustrious figures, uh, like the very Reverend uh, Mark Bishop and our chairperson of the Finance Committee, Christine Deschler, but also our town manager, Mr. Feeney, um, and there's one or two others that will be uh, receiving, uh, I think it's the Paul Harris Award, and then there's another one for businesses. So I just wanted to ask my colleagues, I'd really like to embarrass, I mean, support Mr. Feeney as much as we can <laughs> with a, as many of us that can make that meeting on October, that Rotary Club dinner on October 22nd. I believe it's at St. Eulalie's, but I think we received an a email on it. If we, you haven't, you, sh you should very shortly. And then um, just to pencil in again that uh, October 25th, which is a Friday night, which once again, Mr. Feeney and I play this game that uh, I'm trying to get one step ahead of him, and I'm still not. Uh, he was already aware of the event on Friday, October 25th, which is the firefighters um, retirement party at, at the Crown Plaza, I believe in Woburn. Um, so if you could just kind of pencil that event in. It's not a requirement, but. And then um, we haven't approved it yet, but we will, uh, I believe at our next meeting, the, the last Sunday in October is uh, the second annual uh, trunk or treat uh, beer garden truck uh, free public skate event for, for, that the Dan Kelly Foundation um, is putting on for the second year that Kelly Grealish's wife, family, and Joe Conley started last year and, and really um, got it to the great event it was. It's a, one of their major fundraisers, and I want to thank Mr. Feeney, who, with Mr. Connolly leaving us, um, has, unfortunately for him, but fortunately for all of us, and the found, Dan Kelly Foundation has picked up the ball to make sure that that keeps going, and that's... It, they still need to come before the board um, for approval for the uh, beer garden truck, but that will be at the next meeting. So that's October events. The second thing that I have down was the Arlington Redevelopment Board, which I understand that the chair um, will further uh, get to the, some specificity, specificity for the details, but it looks like it's... Next Monday. Next Monday. Um, uh, to be determined, but probably um, in here. Um, the only thing is um, I would request, whether it's not a stated, uh, timed meeting, if it could be in our mind, maybe. Um, and, and I guess that would depend on the agenda, which I'm not being sarcastic, I'm not really sure about, which leads into my second thing is um, I would like to um, just informally submit a name um, for the redevelopment board appointment if we do go the designee route, but also um, at the same time could have one and or two members of the select board as liaisons. Because this is going to be a you know um, committee. Uh, if you're on this committee, you're gonna have a lot of meetings. You're gonna have two to six meetings a month, six a month as you get closer to when more and more public hearings need to be held from, from the major committee as well as the subcommittees. Um, so, but I think that was something also that the chair was gonna work on. Um, my thing is being a whatever cranky old lady, we have a position and you know, to me it's either a member of this board or a designee. Um, it's been done in the past, but we'll, we'll see on that. And then the third thing is the, um, L Life CSO water quality variance decision did come in. Um, 
have had conversations and communications with the chair, with the town manager, and with town council leading up to this. And um, there were some people um, amongst the community, uh, including with the Mystic River Watershed, Save the Al White Brook, Charles River Watershed, and others that were very disappointed, um, which I agree that the variance was granted because we're going 30 plus years now, but um, it's Kristen Anderson who really has been championing this with other people, you know, Jean Benza, David Soft, David White. She, um, the town manager, I took his colored printout <laughs> copy of the variance when it came out and I gleaned three things that were granted in there, but Ms. Anderson indicated there were nine which we take as, you know, nine victories because in years past, every five years when this came up, the variance was just granted and nothing else. Um, people are of the opinion that it does have to end because the variance is supposed to be, you know, give you some more time to plan, give you some more time to plan. And um, communicated with the chair, spoke with Mr. Feeney about uh, having this as an agenda item, but um, I think from those conversations, uh, closer to either December the end of, of this year, beginning of next year, um, as the, and I'm gonna go through them quickly, the, the nine wins we did get play out. They all have um, different, some have dates are defined, some aren't. Um, and then uh, Mr. Feeney had pointed out in an email, you know, there needs to be some other things sort of further defined in terms of tasks. They need a definite date so we know the task is gonna get done, but for, I'll leave that for the larger meeting, whether it's the end of this year, or beginning of next year, when the chair and Mr. Feeney deem fit. But what we did get in this five-year variance is we got a study on an on-site CSO notification system, which will, um, the feasibility report to how that's going to be done is required by August 2025 to provide real-time alerts that work to protect, protect people from unknowingly walking through sewage, flooding in their homes, yards, and parks. So that's one. Number two, um, an odor control evaluation, which has to be completed by June 2025 by uh, Mass Water Resource Association, MWRA, Somerville, and Cambridge to implement odor control best management practices for their sewer systems, including the CSOs and pipes connected to them. I will say Cambridge is, um, of the three partners, they're the ones in my personal opinion, speaking just for myself, that are taking this the most serious, are not trying to poo-poo it away, <laughs> have already begun planning for it as much as 10 years ago, um, recently hired a, a chief climate um, officer, Julie Warmser, who worked for the Mystic River Watershed Association for seven or 12 years, um, which tells me, you know, they're really taking that seriously. But it's uh, MWRA and Somerville that are, to me, are the not playing well bad actors. The third thing is a floatables control study to be completed by October 2025 for some of those out of compliance tannery book, Brook CSO, as well as all the L CSOs, highlight some of those tannery Brook because they've been in violation and just have done nothing. And you know, now that, um, and, and what this means is they, some of all as well as MWRA and, and Cambridge which I said Cambridge, you know, is already working on it. Some of I mean, MWRA is saying, oh, it's too much money, which is not true. But especially with some of they need to figure out how to fix their CSO to screen out the toilet paper, uh, feces, condoms, uh, t tampons, and others that go into the brook regularly. Um, four is a fair and just financial capability analysis. Uh, but this doesn't have any kind of a date, so that's one of the things um, we on the town will have to follow up on. Um, but what that means is the MWRA cannot continue with what they've been doing, which is, as some have said, their irrelevant, ill-conceived and unaffordable system-wide elimination costs of many billions of dollars, but that they, Cambridge and some of them, will have to submit their own financial analyses to for effects. And, and what I mean by that is MWRA, in my opinion, is taking the, the furthest out soup to nuts solution for everything, for CSOs, even system-wide, which has a crazy dollar number to say, and that means we can't, we, don't, we can't do anything, which is to mean 
not a fair comparison. Um, the fifth is uh, that we're very pleased about is that one of the things we were trying to get through this variance with Cambridge MWRA and Somerville for them to basically acknowledge climate change. And uh, that's in the variance that any future storm reporting has to be based on the rainfall from, and anyone in the ocean oceanic atmospheric world will know what this is, the NOAA Atlas 14, I've looked up and, and looked at it, um, uh, th that they have to abide by that versus us getting studies of, of rain events that are 20 years old. Um, they have to be more current. Um, green infrastructure must be evaluated by Somerville and Cambridge, but there is no date on that. So that's something, again, we'll have to watch in the town manager. We can do it at a future meeting. Um, and then there also has to be a completion of Cambridge's most problematic CSO by next month. And that's the CSO that floods untreated sewage feet away from the MBTA parking garage that lots of people walking, biking, um, come in contact with. And then the last two is the requirement for a public hearing for the updated long-term CSO control plan, which is one of the things that we got, um, as well as um, outreach to environmental justice communities near our wife Brook. And that's especially Somerville and Cambridge, as well as Arlington. So um, there's a lot of stuff. Um, six of the nine have definitive dates that we could track. Three don't, which I didn't really notice, so the manager had pointed out. Um, but I, I do want to say that Save the Alwife Brook and, and Kristen Anderson, they'll be send, sending something out where they do individually thank each member of this board as well as the 197 town meeting members who voted for this. But one of the things I'm really happy about is they also um, call out some folks at MassDEP who have spent 14 months working on this and listening at all these public hearings and came out with these nine action steps that we've never gotten before um, and they'll be hi highlighting their names and one of the things Kristen Anderson has been doing with her joint meetings with all the watershed and neighborhood groups and city groups in Somerville is Yes, we agree this shouldn't be allowed to continue, but we should take the nine wins that are in here because this was never addressed in this way before. And then when it comes up next time, what we think will happen is as a result of these six to nine steps being done, um, that this won't be just a continuous rollover variance, that at some point it will end and there will be some solution that is not going to please everybody because not everybody's going to get 100%, but we'll certainly, and I will send out what I've sent to the town council, town manager, and chair, um, a video that uh, Kristen Anderson and her partner got in there, which I would never do, canoe or kayaks huh. this weekend uh, after DCR sent out a, a, a subcontractor, which did clean up um, under uh, different bridges, but what they went through you'll see disastrous, you know, and that we're gonna put in harmful. Um, even after that cleanup, where do you see what got let loose that's under the bridge by Sunnyside Ave and Cottage Ave, and it's disgusting and gross, and they went through it in kayaks, so. But it's also floating further up and downstream, which means, you know, there's more work to be done, but thank you, that's it. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd? <laughs> just briefly, so ne next Monday is the joint meeting with the redevelopment board. We will have an agenda posted on Thursday. Um, there were discussions about the Arlington Heights business plan. There was discussion, will be discussion about parking. Um, there has been inquiries, I think discussion that's been requested about liquor licenses and some challenges that they're finding from from applicants, um, we did put something in there on the master plan. I talked to Mrs. Mahan about that. That's going to be more open-ended, but I am going to have a further discussion with the chair of the redevelopment board tomorrow morning, and we will finalize um, the agenda one and two, the venue, and that will all be posted in advance of um, by Thursday. So with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. <laughs> Motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.